Chica, we are live. Awesome. How are you, Scott? I'm okay. Um, it's uh, it's it's nice out here. Nice, nice, nice weather. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, seventies, sunny, probably just like it is in Japan, right? Yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 finally starting to feel like spring here. So ish. <laughs> So it's really nice over here. Um, I'm in Kyoto right now. And uh, yeah, this is a really uh, uh, tourist town, but there's nobody right now. So all the beautiful temples and shrines feels like I have it all to myself sometimes. <laughs> right. Yeah, that uh, that that's nice. But after a while, you're going to miss the tourists. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Or maybe not. I don't know. Maybe not. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm, I've got all these screens going on. We, we need a production assistant. What do you think? Do you think there's a an internship possibility for someone here? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. We'll, we'll convince okay. one of our students that this is a, a great opportunity um, to come on here and help us every week while we do this. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it doesn't pay anything, but the exposure and the experience are fantastic. Yeah. So um, Chica and Scott, we have been um, working on our Spanish records mm -hmm. um, that will be coming up. Um, unfortunately, we are in different parts of the world, so we can get together and uh, rehearse or, you know, play music together and even, you know, arrange our music. But we're getting there. We are. And, yeah. We are, yeah. Any, any, anything we can do to to just move the needle forward a little bit, mm -hmm. um, but uh, never, never be uh, unproductive is is our motto. Right. Yeah. And so. luckily, we have this technology, you know, and we started using a bunch of apps to keep us, um, you know, on top of things. <laughs> and uh, yeah, well, that's how we started incorporating this app called slack and we have Airtable and all these kind of things so yeah no this is this is this has been well i mean this has been awful this whole shutting down the world thing but um it's also been an opportunity to learn a whole bunch of new skills which is actually you know something so yeah just trying to trying to find something positive here um and uh you know i i gotta say i mean i've been i've been practicing so much i actually wore down my thumbnail which no. has only happened at one other time in my life so you know, that's, that's, that's uh, a good sign. That's a good sign, I guess. Or maybe you've sign. been, you've been, uh, what is it? Filing? File, not shaving the filing. No, I, hair. yeah, I, I, I realized the other day that I've been, I've been obsessively filing, shaping, and buffing my nails um, since 1986. Mm. <laughs> So, yeah. you know, I'm, I don't know if that's a healthy thing or not, but uh, no. anyway, hey, um, I hear we've got a pretty cool guest tonight. Yeah, I, it's so amazing to have a special guest tonight, and uh, yeah, I can't be any happier. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. Him join us. Yeah, um, Pepe Romero is is going to be here tonight. So, you know, I, I know those of you out there who have... Um, you know, met him, would you know, like to say hi to him and, you know, maybe share some stories. Those of you who have never met him probably have questions that you've always wanted to ask him. Um, type those into the chat um, as they fit into the conversation. We'll, we'll be bringing those up. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, 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 I see no reason to make him wait a minute longer. What do you say we bring him in here and, you know, say hello? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. There he is. Hi, Pepe. Yeah, Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I have been listening to both of you. <laughs> ah. See, we, we, we never know if you're listening when we're talking. So, you know, but, you know, this is being recorded and shared later. So, of course, you know, whatever Perfect. we say will be public knowledge. Um, yeah, we mean it. We, we are so, so honored um, that you are willing to uh, come here and talk to us. Um, you know, for, for, for an hour or so. Um, I'm very happy. I yeah. miss both of you. I know. And it I, happened... missed, I missed you this last summer. I know. So last time we were together was in 2019, the summer. It, in yes. Granada, it, it, Spain. Doesn't it feel weird, though? It the, the last year just seems like missing time. I mm -hmm. sort of feel like we were there last summer. Yeah, and then I realized it wasn't last summer; it was the summer before that. Yeah, 
Yes. In, yes. in, a, in, a, in a way. Um, also because those were my last decent memories <laughs> before I was just sitting at home all the time. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. yeah so we, Pepe, we, were, were you in Granada when the whole pandemic started happening? I was in uh, late, mm, well, in early, early March, mm. uh, a year ago, I was on the way to play in Europe. Mm. And as normally I do, my wife and I go to Spain for a few days, if we can, if we have the time, we go to Spain, spend a few days and then do the tours or the concerts. Mm -hmm. and always going back and forth from our home in Granada. Mm -hmm. And we did that, arrived in Granada on March 10th, and were supposed to fly out to Germany on the 13th, mm -hmm. and on the 12th, they closed Spain. Oh, wow. And I remained Carissa and I remained in Granada until August. Late August, I came back here and then she joined, she came back to the States also, but, but she came in in uh, September. And since then I have been here. So basically I've been in lockdown in Spain, in Granada mm -hmm. from March until August and in California from August until now. <laughs> and, uh, but this uh, experience of uh, the technology, I was completely, totally inept and ignorant about <clears throat> it. And for me, I always read books with a book, wrote with a paper and a pen, and uh, everything very old fashioned. Mm -hmm. But I have enjoyed very much the ability to see and to experience and to see the faces of the people I love and to play concerts mm -hmm. on, online. Last summer, I had the privilege to be able to play for both the music and dance uh, festival in Granada, mm. which was from the Alhambra, from the Patio de los Arrayanes, wow. and the concert that I gave for the summer arts from mm. the palace of Carlos V in the Alhambra. Mm. So, and to be able to do that and uh, have all this streaming and all this modern cap cap capabilities makes it much more tolerable. Mm. Yeah. Well, you know, the last time I had a video chat with you, I think was July or something like that. And, you know, I've got to say your, your lighting, your audio, everything is so much better now than it was. <laughs> and so clearly you've, you've, you've done a, uh, a, a tech technology upgrade there. Oh. Seeing as this is, uh, <laughs> You know, not not over in a week or two. So you know, we all had to get lighting and HD cameras. Really? And yes, yes, yeah. For, that, that's funny. I was going to ask you, hey, how are you staying busy and creative in in lockdown? But um, you, you you kind of answered it. You're 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 just sort of doing what you were doing before, but digitally. Um, are you working on new projects? Learning new music, um, preparing. Actually, actually, I have been. It's almost like going back to the very, to, to the beginning, mm. because at the beginning I had very few. Well, at first I didn't have any concerts, and then were very a concert here, a concert there, uh, while I was uh, actually a young boy, mm -hmm. and uh, I was practicing then. Whatever I was in the mood to play, mm -hmm. what I happened to be in love at the moment. And uh, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm mm -hmm. playing the guitar more than ever 
but without the specific projects right. of having to make a recording, having to do mm -hmm. a concert tour, having to play. So actually, I've been playing tons of music because I just love a mm -hmm. lot of music. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you mentioned before you're on a Villalobos kick right now. Which... Yes, that was yesterday and today. I have been <laughs> on a Villalobos. The day yeah. before that, I was in a Bach kick. Oh. And before that, I was in Spanish Renaissance. Spanish and Renaissance. Wow. Yes. Most, mostly uh, uh, vihuela? Vihuela music, yes. And nice. then uh, I've gone through being totally crazy about Giuliani and playing a lot of Giuliani and then, of course, Tarrega. So yeah. I'm having a lot of fun with, with, the, the, thing, with yes. the guitar. And I highly recommend it that... Uh, these difficult times, music is so powerful, is mm. so good, is so comforting mm -hmm. that I totally recommend it. If you have the chance, if you already play an instrument, of course, it's spend time with your with with your instrument. And if you don't, learn one. Mm -hmm. I have a friend of mine. He's a very, uh, he's a great uh, ophthalmologist, very world famous doctor. And he's in retirement, and recently had some very serious, uh, well, his wife passed away. Mm -hmm. And he's starting to play the piano. And there, and it's totally coming to the piano and the music. He's always loved music, but the piano, the piano is coming to the rescue. There's something very special about playing an instrument at whatever level you can. Mm. We don't have to be a virtuoso. There is something so special about the communication with the instrument, even at a very, very uh, basic level. Yeah, I, I remember actually when I first started playing was actually some of the most enjoyable times I'd had with the instrument. You know, it's like when you pick up a sport or something, it, when, you, when you start really caring about it, it gets really serious. It gets a little bit more stressful. Mm -hmm. But you know, when you're playing just like a child and you're just free, um, and you're discovering that that's actually the, the funnest time for a lot of people with the instrument. But she and I had a conversation a week or so ago with a music therapist. And uh, he was talking about the power of music as a way to connect with others and with yourself and things like that. Yes. And so the, all of these things that, you know, as artists, we intuitively knew, um, you know, academics are studying this and, you know, it's, it's, it's completely backed up by, uh, by, by science, by psychology. Mm -hmm. Which you know, I didn't need to hear a psychologist tell me that. I knew you but, knew uh, it. You of knew course. it. And, and I don't know. Um, for you were talking about as a child when you don't have the responsibility of a career, mm -hmm. having more fun and more freedom mm -hmm. with the with the music and with the instrument, with the guitar or the saxophone or whatever the instrument. For me, I don't know if the guitar and music kept the child alive in me for 70 years of concertizing mm -hmm. solo, like solo this next year, I will be celebrating 70 years since my first concert, mm. 60 years since the quartet. My family and I started the quartet. Right. And thousands of concerts and many recordings and a lot of uh, high level 
responsibility concerts and recordings. But the child in me was always alive. And I don't know if music kept that and made it possible that I always had that easy connection with the music, or maybe I'm just childish <laughs> by nature. <laughs> Well, I, I, that reminds me of a funny meme I saw in social media, and it was a, a child talking to his mother, and he said, uh, Mom, when I grow up, I want to be a musician. And she says, well, you're going to have to choose which one because you can't do both. So <laughs> <laughs> It's true. It's true. I, I so. completely believe it. <laughs> I completely believe it that if you're a musician, you just mm -hmm. don't grow up. Yeah, yeah. Well, Eric Satie, one of my favorite composers, um, always spoke about you have to have a childlike relationship with with music, and that that was sort of his philosophy in composing was it was you know purposely childlike. Um, you know, and of course he also has the famous quote, you know, when I was a child, they said when you grow up you'll see I'm 50 now and I still haven't seen anything, which yeah. is a little cynical, yeah. but mm -hmm. it's sort of that I didn't grow up, I don't know what you're yes. talking about, um, which I yeah, I, 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 like I actually feel that. Mm -hmm. I really, I'm very grateful for it. Yeah, to keep yeah. that spirit going. Yes, um, yeah. to, keep, to keep that spirit. You know, I I noticed. Um, a lot of composers um, and and active touring artists tend to live to quite old age and be, you know, very productive. I, I think about, you know, Horowitz and Segovia and your father, of course. Yes. Um, Stravinsky, Bernstein. Um, Copeland, you know, I mean, you know, everybody's north of 90, you know, creeping up on 100, and they're, they've got all of their wits about them, they're active, they're creative. Um, I, I think music uh, keep, keeps something alive in you, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, a lot of people retire, and it just sort of turns to mush. Yeah. Well, the one thing is, we never retire. Right. Yeah. We maybe stop playing concerts or stop the professional life. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I cannot I cannot imagine mm. not the creative keep, side of you. Not no. to keep it going. I know that my father played and loved music to the very end. And even when today then I was playing uh, Villa Lobos I remember that about a week before he passed away, he got really excited and he was not even uh, thinking, he was not even playing the guitar at the moment, but he got very excited and said, Pepe, I just figured out exactly how to eliminate all the squeaks from the from Villalobos, because uh, you know that Villalobos has a lot of uh, uh, glissandos and a lot of the same chord up and down the fingerboard. Mm. Yes, the ba bass strings. <laughs> uh, yes, and the bass string, and uh, he was working out his technique, even in his mind, mm -hmm. to the very last do, do, you, do you remember what he said about that? Because I do play a lot of Il Lobos, and those squeaks drive me crazy. <laughs> the squeak is that people try to take the lift. You either have to lift completely off, mm -hmm. or actually, on the side, you, you play, you put a little more pressure, not less, but a little more. Mm. And before you start moving, you slide the finger so that the, the, the flesh yeah. right, go right. is on the side. Mm. 
So you're not on the tip of the callus. That that's yeah. Well, you are on the you are on the callus. You are on the callus, but you move the the callus to the side. Mm -hmm. And you apply a little extra pressure and eliminates the the squeak. Yeah, those yeah, ben Benjamin Brittery told me a funny story about playing at uh, in Manhattan. I think it was at a, a retirement home. You know, they have these communities and they have concert series. And he thought he was playing great. It was probably Prelude One or something like that. And it's like, oh, I'm making these people's day. And this woman goes, "What's that squeaking?" And she goes, "What's that squeaking?" <laughs> And uh, <laughs> apparently, never really quite got over that. Um, <laughs> you know, she wasn't holding back. What, what's that squeaking? But, mm. So anyway. squeaking is is not really the the beauty of it. it you want to eliminate it. Ah, uh, well, I don't like it. Mm. I, yeah, I use recording strings in the studio to avoid it. Yeah, mm. I don't. I don't like it, and. Uh, Actually, that's not so far off because recording strings are a version of kind of the the bass strings that Villalobos probably used. Mm. They were not called recording strings, but they were made with silk inside. Inside, mm. yeah, and they they were much more quiet. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, or you know. I think what Williams would purposely sometimes not change his strings right before a concert because it's like that's right. They, they can either be bright or they can, you know, they can either be dull or they can be squeaky. Your choice, but um, yeah, yeah, file your calluses. The non-guitar players, I'm sure, are finding this fascinating that we're talking about squeaking strings <laughs> all the time. But you know, it, the, the struggle is real. <laughs> it's, it's, the it's struggle real. is <laughs> uh, well. Every instrumentalist mm -hmm. has some kind of extraneous noise that the yes. instrument itself makes mm -hmm. that we want to minimize it. Yeah, I've, I can, worked, I've yeah. worked very hard all my life to squeak as little as possible. Mm. Everybody should be able to say the same thing. <laughs> 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 Great. Um, Pepe, you mentioned the the sixty years with uh, the quartet, and um, I think it was last week I I watched on YouTube a wonderful documentary um, about the quartet, and uh, I I believe it said directed by Vicente Covas, which uh, that can't be right. It um, is correct. It is exactly <laughs> it's right. Vicente's uh, directorial debut. It was very very good. It was very moving. Yes. Um, I, I guess I'm just wondering what was the the genesis behind the documentary and uh, how much did you actually listen to Vicente? Actually, I was sitting here with Carissa in the in this room and I thought we had all these plans, mm -hmm. massive uh, tours of, of the United States, of Europe, and uh, to celebrate this uh, this event, which is not only 60 years for our quartet, it's 60 years for the guitar quartet as a genre. Yeah. And it, it was... Uh, so I wanted to do something. And I thought maybe we play a concert on on Zoom. Mm. But then some uh, we were being very careful, and some uh, Lito was in Los Angeles. He had been visiting his children, so it became kind of a problem to get together in the same room and play a concert. And I was talking to, to Vicente and told him that I wanted to do something. Uh, you know how he is. I he, definitely he, do. His mind is working at a 
supersonic speed. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the next thing, he was doing a documentary that we aired exactly at 7.30 on January 20th. Mm. Which 7.30 uh, Pacific Standard Time, and that was 60 years exactly oh. from, the, from the first concert. The first concert coincided with the inauguration of President Kennedy. Oh. And the documentary coincided with the inauguration of hmm. President Biden. Wow, wow. 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 <laughs> And the the first concert was it was I always forget the name. Is it the the hall on the on the west side of Los Angeles? Is that Wilshire Evil? That's it. Yes, mm -hmm. the Wilshire Evil Theater. Yes. I, I wonder. The last time I was in that theater, and I've been there several times, was the debut concert with Matt Greif as a member of the LAGQ. That was the Wilshire Bell. Oh. And I I wonder if they did that because of you. I, I don't know. I, I, didn't. I don't. I don't know. I never asked. I never asked them that. But uh, maybe it was just yeah. coincident. Destiny have a funny way of directing things its own way. It, it it's yes, it does. It is. I was just about to say, you know, tying everything together. I was actually. I went to that concert with Nico Bolas, the record producer, yes. who made the CD with with Chica and I. So, you know, oh, there, there you go. Because yes. his his mother Mary Bolas was a huge Los Romeros fan, and uh, yeah, yeah, we we got her tickets, and she ran into you in the lobby for the meet and greet after, and she was she was you made her day, you made her day. Yeah, and he told us our that story. Um, at our, you know, the, when we were making the record. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Yes, yes, <laughs> that's great. Yeah, but you know, things happen, and it, it seems that, that it is all just a coincidence. But who knows? I remember mm, my first recording was a result of a concert that I did. I, I share, I was invited to play with a comedian. This is even before, uh, before the Wilshire Evil, I was invited to play with a comedian named uh, Lord Buckley. Mm. Lord Buckley was an English comedian and he used to do concerts, but he shared his concerts with, and he asked me to share the concert with him. So we divided it into four segments. I would play, he would have a segment, a monologue, and then intermission, then I would play, and then he would have his last one. And this took place at another theater in Hollywood, the Ivor Theater. The Ivor Theater, I think it's long gone. I don't think it even exists. But it was a small uh, theater where things like mm, a concert of comedy <laughs> and a young, I was 15 years old, 14, I was, at that time I was 14 years old, uh, Spanish guitarist would play, and Andre Previn came to the concert. Wow. And it was with that connection that Andre Previn liked the way I play. Mm -hmm. And he went to Contemporary Records and was a jazz label mm -hmm. in Los Angeles and told them, and that's how I got my first uh, record with Contemporary Records when I was 15 years old. Mm -hmm. And my father and Celine uh, shared a recording. So that was the beginning. Of, your, uh, of the recording career. That was your and flamenco record, right? Pepe? That was my flamenco record. Mm -hmm. um, but in the concert, I didn't play, 
I played some flamenco, but I played actually mostly classical. But when it came time to perform, to do the recordings, because we wanted to, to have one a recording of mine and one of my father and Celine, we divide the repertoire. Mm -hmm. For that reason, I that was the same reason that the first years of the quartet, all my solos were flamenco mm. because we were dividing the repertoire. And in my family, I was the only one for a long time to play flamenco. Nobody else played it. Mm. My father was a wonderful composer that he um, <clears throat> used the flamenco um, forms to compose, mm -hmm. but he himself as a player never did play it. Mm -hmm. And Angel also played flamenco, but he started uh, later. I fell in love with it in, in Spain mm -hmm. when, I, when I was a kid and I learned it. So being the only one that played it, that's the part I played in the in the quartet concerts. Yeah, what um, when when we have our students go to Spain um, every summer, um, I always make sure that they get a healthy dose of flamenco um, while they're there. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. Kai it's and, it's and, amazing. Yeah, yeah, Kai does his classes in the morning, and then uh, Luis Mariano. Um, he yes. does he does his thing, and we had uh, Geronimo um, do something. I think one year. Um, uh, what could could you articulate the benefits of a classical guitar player studying flamenco? Um, you know, maybe they don't have to do a deep dive, but you know, rasciados and not a deep dive, but the you just said it, rasciados, rasgea physically, rasgeados puts your right hand in a position that is this exactly exactly the right position from which you can you play arpeggios scales chords and you are not only exercising the movement of contracting the hand which we are always doing to play classical but Extens to extensors to extend and, and the speed in which you extend and the speed in which you have to return, it's, uh, it increases the health. It exercises the health of the right hand and puts it in ex just about as perfect and natural mm -hmm. position. It's almost impossible to do a rasgueado from an awkward, forced, tensed position. So mm. technically for the right hand, it has immense benefits, um, um, amazing benefits um, for, the, for the technique of classical music as well. Then right. the next thing is musically, Spanish music, the Spanish nationalistic, Albéniz, Rodrigo, mm -hmm. um, De Falla, Turina, Torroba, all of these, all the great uh, Spanish composers mm -hmm. that have written and that are such a strong part of the repertoire of the guitar, mm -hmm. of the classical guitar, mm -hmm are very deeply rooted in the flamenco mm, mm, modalities and the mm -hmm. flamenco the flamenco music mm, and yes. the nuance yeah so the more you know the better you understand their music the better you know what they are trying to say. I have heard so many 
so many uh, versions of the homenaje a Tarrega that begins, is the first movement is a soleares. The last movement is a garrotit. These are two very traditional flamenco rhythms and flamenco mm -hmm. uh, forms. And Turina doesn't put where the accents fall because by saying soleares, you are supposed to know where the accents in a soleares mm -hmm. happen. Mm -hmm. It's intuitive. It's it's already you you know it. It's like mm -hmm. composers when they write mazurka, they don't put where <laughs> the you are supposed to know yeah, where the mazurka is like. Yeah, yeah they don't put the so, accent marks in. You're just supposed to know where they go. You're mm -hmm. supposed to know where they go. Yeah, or but saraband or something. Saraband, exactly. Chacon. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to know. I love the compass and the chacon. Yes, and and the the understanding of flamenco music is wonderfully helpful mm -hmm. to understanding Spanish music. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And I, to I, my I, yeah, and to myself who is very new to guitar music and also to flamenco music, you know, listening to it was. Just um, the the rhythm itself, it's it was very complex to me. Oh, it you is. Know? It's inc mm -hmm. it's incredible. But you know, you just before this, uh, before we went on the air, we were talking about Gershwin. Mm -hmm. To understand Gershwin, it helps to know a little bit and have a feeling for jazz. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, and uh, well, you know, Pepe. The the next time we're all in Granada, I think the the way to get Chica, you know, appropriately introduced to flamenco is we all head back up to Sacramonte, to the caves uh, <laughs> on a Wednesday night. I think is oh. when. when, when <laughs> yes, is your favorite dancer is it Ivan? Ivan Ivan yeah. Vargas. That's that. Yes. That is a powerful, touristy but powerful. Mm. Um, introduction. I had a blast at that, and and Chica, the dancers, they're right in front of you, and it's a little intimidating. They're they're mm -hmm. so intense. Mm -hmm. They are. They yeah. are very. Well, flamenco is very intense music. Yeah. yeah. And uh, be prepared. I am sure. Did they ask you, Chica? Did they ask you to dance at the end of the show? <laughs> they will. Really? <laughs> oh yeah. Of course. Of course they will. Yeah. But don't laugh so much, Scott. You no, might get no. asked to dance yourself. I'm very good at avoiding eye contact. <laughs> I think I'm about to get put on the spot. I'll pretend I to be know, on the phone. and I know I you know can't the, get reception I, in the cave, but I don't care. I know the dancers there very well. And I will make sure I'll go and say, don't forget the red hair man. <laughs> but Pepe, you're, in Spain, you usually get me out of horrible situations, not into them. Well, that was before. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a story we won't tell here, but Pepe got me out of a very horrible culinary experience. Oh, yes, and, uh, yes, yes, yes. I don't. It's not very. But you know, flamenco in not this coming year, but the year after is the anniversary of the 1922 mm. flamenco festival that Manuel de Falla, Salvador Dalí, Turina, um, Lorca, they all, they had a flamenco festival, very, very, very uh, great and very famous. And with tremendously powerful consequences uh, for the music and for the um, for the art of flamenco and we'll be celebrating it. It took place in Granada, in the Alhambra. Mm -hmm. So like you say, flamenco is a great part 
of the Granada Festival. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and maybe we just get a little bit of a glimpse of Duende. The Duende is there. The Duende doesn't, didn't get scared by the pandemic or anything. The Duende doesn't leave Granada. What's a Duende? Oh, Duende is an invisible spirit Ooh. <laughs> that it is, it infects you with, uh, with the love for life, the love for music, the love for love. And uh, it inspires you. It's the part of that musicians we need to be able to make music not a routine, but an inspire and a moving and an unforgettable experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, isn't it a bit like in some other styles of music what they might call soul or? Yes, yeah, soul, a but. Little, a little. Duende is, is both, um, it has a touch of being naughty, but it's a, it's a very profound, um, beautiful experience. It's a very complete experience of the arts. Mm. Well, I, I th th that means we need to have even more flamenco in the festival and in the course that year. And oh yeah, we will. Yeah. We will yeah. on that year. Yes, mm -hmm. that that sounds great. But we are planning on having quite a bit this year, this summer coming up mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, let's 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 talk about that. I mean, you know, we were saying before, um, you know, the virus doesn't care that we have plans uh, this summer, um, so it's entirely up to the virus what we're going to uh, actually end up doing. But um, for those of you who don't know, we've. We, we've been going to Spain since 2017, 2016, 2017. Right. It, it's been several years. Um, and uh, through a program called CSU Summer Arts, uh, we bring students, mostly from California, young guitar students, um, college age, to Granada. And, uh, you know, obviously they, they get to play master classes and, you know, things like that with, 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 with Pepe and other guest artists, but the most important thing is they get to be in in Granada. They get to be in Andalusia. They they get mm -hmm. to experience the culture of this music that they they already love, but they don't maybe know exactly where it came from. Kind of like a jazz musician going to you know Harlem or New Orleans or something like that. You know to really understand this is this is this is where it it. it you know, this is the mothership. Um, That's right. That's right. And um, yeah, we're we're certainly hoping to to get back this year. I think August eighteenth, that Monday. I think we should be able to. You think? I think so. I'm very hopeful. Yeah, I I, I hope so too. There's a concert at the Alhambra that night, so you know, I gotta I don't want to miss that. <laughs> but. Yeah, and oh, and and I should mention that uh, the the course comes together with the festival and uh, Vicente Covas, who we were talking about a moment ago, um, who directed the, the the Los Romeros 60th anniversary documentary, is the director of that festival, and you know somebody who always seems to know how to get doors to open in in Granada, mm -hmm. which is a wonderful thing. But um, yeah, we've we've had some wonderful experiences in Spain with you, Pepe. Um, you know, yes. we're, I mean, we know the mayor of Granada, um, but I still sort of think of you as the mayor of Granada, even though, <laughs> even, even though we've been to City Hall several times and taken photos with the, the elected mayor. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, walking around town with you actually gets much more notice. <laughs> well, I love, I love it. And uh, we've had some incredible experiences. Remember the the lunar eclipse ah, ah, over yes. the Alhambra sitting wow. on, in the in the terrace there. Yes, that was 2018. Yes. I think it yeah, was you sent me the photo. Uh, it was a 
blood moon with with a total eclipse with a total eclipse wow and we watched it from the roof of your home yes happen over the alhambra palace wow and i had the opportunity the last time you were there to witness something very magical on that very same rooftop uh. i go to see both of you <laughs> play granada <laughs> as I was sitting in the lower patio, having a glass of red wine and a Cuban cigar. That's right. <laughs> Pre preparing plates of tapas that your, uh, your wife Carissa, was done. Carissa yeah. was making tapas, mm -hmm. and I was listening to the two of you uh, do the video of Granada by Alberti. Yeah. That was, yeah. yeah, that was, that was, so that, that was, was pretty really magical. <laughs> Yeah, I, I occasionally get people commenting like, wow, that is amazing green screen work. How did you do that? <laughs> no. That's real. <laughs> it's yes. real. Why can't yeah. you tell? It's yeah. real. Yeah. But yeah, it's it, the, the view from your home is, it's it's literally hard for some people to believe. Mm -hmm. It is. It's, it's, it's right it's, across from the palace. And yeah, what a view from your living room and also your patio. Yes. Yes, that that yeah. I, if I, well, I guess we were kind of joking around about buying that property just below yours. <laughs> I guess yes, it still is for sale. Is it for oh. sale? <laughs> yes. I'll have to check the price and you know, talk to my talk to my accountant. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> see, see if that's happening. But yeah, I I would I I'm going to do everything in my power to get back there this summer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's such a shame to have missed it this last year. Um, you know, it, it's the highlight of my year. And I, I always tell people, and I, it, it's not a joke when I say, you know, the students are like, oh, thank you so much for, for you know, this experience. You know, it's like, I'm here for me. You know, you're, you, you helped yes. me get here, but I'm, I'm here for me. And I'm here to listen to Pepe Romero because if I don't get my, annual Pepe inspirational tune-up, <laughs> um, I, I, I can get into a rut or something thank like that. You, but, thank you, thank you. Know, you. You've been inspiring me since I was 19 in, uh, in Salzburg, remember? That was, that's another beautiful place. Wow. That was, that was a lot of fun. That was yes. back at the Mozartam in Salzburg, I think 89, 90, something like that. Yes. But yes. It, yeah, the whole, you know, Alex and Heike and everybody was there and it was a fun fun group um yes. but yeah so it's been a, it's been a long time and you've been uh you know we've been in the pursuit of music happiness friendship and all those beautiful things <laughs> yes yes yeah. uh, you know you you you're so good at keeping things um beautiful and creative and you know not not turning them yeah, what am I trying to say? You 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 keep the magic in your in your music um, better you. than any artist I've ever met in any style of music. Thank you, thank you. It, it's it's just it's truly amazing. Um, and I, I guess you already kind of mentioned like how you how you do that, but you know if if you've got a the the for me the most important thing is that I do believe in magic. I believe that magic exists. And I also believe that every problem comes with a solution. Mm. And sometimes the solution is very well hidden but we never can give up looking for the solution mm -hmm. and for the belief of magic. And never ever stop feeling the love for one another. I think um, we are very fortunate that we have music because through music, 
we can say what we sometimes have, it's impossible to say um, with words. Mm. How do you get out in front of thousands of people or hundreds or uh, that you have never met and tell them I love you and really mean it mm. better than by playing a beautiful piece, a beautiful phrase, a beautiful piece of music. Mm. How else can you open your arms, your heart and embrace everyone in a room, not knowing who they are, not knowing what they believe, not knowing anything about them except that they are just like you, human beings. And embrace them, give them the, your most inner secrets that with music, you you become very vulnerable because you you do open your heart to all who are listening. And in doing so, then everybody is finishing the, the magical task that the composer starts because the composer start in a mystical moment in a trance in which he is touched or she is touched by the spark of inspiration and love. Mm -hmm. And that then he puts it down on a piece of paper. But that piece of paper becomes a map. It becomes only a way for other people to come in and read that map and produce the sounds that are hidden in it. But the truth is that the person who's listening to the music is the one that is finishing the composition. The composition is not finished until it's heard. Mm -hmm. And we get to do that. Yeah. What a privilege. <laughs> yes. What a privilege. If, yeah. you, if you get to do that and you don't believe in magic, then there's something wrong. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. That, that's, I, I hope everybody who hears this really listens to what you just said and understands that music is a, a way to connect with, uh, like you said, people you've never met, with composers who are long gone, um, with yes. something beautiful yet inexplicable, mm -hmm. um, you know, something profound. And you know, if if you can't call it magic, then you know maybe you're, someone's just uncomfortable with the word, but they can't deny what it is. No, it's whatever you can call it anything you want. But but the truth is that uh, I have been enjoying not only the music of these great composers, but their friendship. I've been enjoying getting to know them personally because through the music, you get to know and experience a human being, even if they wrote it hundreds of years ago. Yeah. In that, and maybe in, in another part of the world that you may not even know. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, you get to have 
a human experience with somebody that maybe is not alive anymore, then you have never met and you have ne you never will have the opportunity to meet this person, but you do mm -hmm. through yeah. the music. Mm -hmm. So I have I get very involved with the human connection with the composers of the music I play. Yeah. In a way, being a musician and having played the guitar and it's having these feelings is like being able to become Peter Pan. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And we all have that possibility. We all can become Peter Pan. Mm. Yeah, I, I, if I if I if I grow up, you're going to be outside my window knocking on it, going. Uh, of course, <laughs> I will be. I will be there. Yeah, so something you said um, about the composer having this moment where they they're putting these thoughts that come to them to paper and writing it down. I remember you saying uh, you should never learn a piece of music faster than it took the composer to write it. <laughs> I believe that, yes. I, I, I found that very, very helpful. Um, yes. So you really get to know. You have the, to know everything mm. about it. Yeah. Right. And take your time. Yeah. 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 And the, and the problem I think these days is that we, we, especially maybe for students, they feel like they have to know so many repertoires and learn so many all at once. But, you know, you really realize, even as a teacher, too, it's to take time, like learn about the history, learn about the composer, learn about the yes. instrument. Yeah. You have to embrace everything. And, and even if you want to play a lot of music, and learn a lot of repertoire, do it one at a time. Mm. Yeah. So that you can really mm, connect to every note and every sound and every silence that is between the notes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So I didn't get to go to Spain this year, but I still got my 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 inspiration, my inspirational moment here. So, thank you. I, no, I, thank I, you. I, I always love seeing both of you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, we're thank we're you. we're all over the world right now, but uh, yeah, ho hopefully we'll all be back together sooner and rather I than, cannot, than later. I really enjoyed so much your recording, mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. am very much looking forward to see what comes out what is the next thing to come out of that love affair between the guitar and the saxophone it's yeah. it's it's all spanish music you you've heard some of it already i know, I know. <laughs> so, but i'm looking forward to what i haven't heard mm, and to yes. a repeat of what i already know thank you thank you thank so you. much um maestro it it was a privilege um and an honor to have you uh here with us and uh you know, I I cannot wait to see you again, um, and uh, hopefully Spain works out this summer. But if not, you got to know we'll be back there next year. Mm. I hope so. I hope very very much that we all get to be there in in person. Yeah. Yes. And yes. I want to hear all your stories and <laughs> yes, and, and, and have tapas and go to the caves. The, you know, I tried to make croquetas and they were awful. <laughs> they were. I, I try. You know, you 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 shred the potatoes and then you know put them in the bowls, then the jamón y queso, and yeah. then I have an air fryer and you know try it. It's not. It, it's not the same. No. no. Call Carissa. <laughs> okay. Okay. Have her guide you. Okay, I can do a, a, a Spanish tortilla pretty well, but my croquetas are just. Not Inedible. so good. Well. <laughs> but we, we have to go down to that restaurant you like by the we, river. We go down to the cave and have the grandmother 
the older gypsy in the cave mm. of La Rocio teach mm. you how to do croquetas. Mm. Oh. oh, that's a real that, thing. Yeah. <laughs> Now you got to get the, the recipe, uh, abuela. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> okay, I, I'll, I, I wrote that down to remind you um, that uh, you'll help me with my croquetas. Well, I personally won. I'll right. help you eat them. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but, but, uh, but I'll guide you to the right person. Okay. I, 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 any help I can get, I, I, will, I will take it. But um, yeah, th thank you so much for, for joining us here. Thank you for inviting me. It was a great pleasure to see both of you and to spend this time with you. Okay, and, and thank everybody you. Uh, who watched this live or the many, many people who watch this later on once we post it, um, we, we hope you enjoyed the conversation as well and hope to see you all again next week. Thank Thanks, you. Everybody. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. Bye.